Welcome to our Bay Area Home Buyers webinar, How to Avoid Overpaying at Critical Points in the Home Buying Process. Just a little bit myself, my name is John Wobenhorst. I'm the founder of North Bay Small Biz, which is an internet marketing company. Uh, but be and I started that about five years ago. Before I started that, I was a real estate agent myself on the East Coast for 25 years. So I kind of was tuned in to how real estate works to some degree. And I have to say, when I first came to the Bay Area, it was kind of shocking. <laughs> so you probably, if you've been involved at all in the real estate process, you know some of these issues. There's sky-high prices. How do you deal with multiple offers? If you get a loan, how can you hopefully lock in the best rate? What type of loan is best? There's FHA. There's conventional. You know, what, is the, what kind of down payment do I need? There's a way to get that down payment lower. <laughs> Uh, what are up-and-coming areas, how do you deal with inspections, how do you balance buying and selling a home at the same time. And there's even some properties you can't even get conventional financing for. What do you do in those situations? So basically, the long and short of it is, <laughs> Bay Area real estate is a jungle. <laughs> so if you go into a jungle, uh, it really helps to have some good guides. And I have to say, you know, being that I was in real estate on the East Coast, I, I sort of had my eye out, you know, for uh, just because, you know, I was used to helping people for 25 years buy houses, and I still sort of help people. People ask me opinions because they know I know something about it. And I said, well, you know, you don't want to venture into the jungle without some time-tested superheroes. <laughs> and I have to say, through some business networking, I met two people who are, I, I would classify them as superheroes. Okay, maybe that's a little extreme, but <laughs> basically these are people who, are, who have been in the jungle and they've been there on the ground because that really is, the, you know, being in the trenches, as they say, and uh, being through. So there's two people. Uh, one of them is Carrie Nasland with Mason McDuffie, Better Home and Garden Real Estate in Berkeley. And she's a really uh, fantastic real estate agent. And there's Vic Joshi, with C2 Financial, a mortgage consultant. So they've been very kind to come on the webinar today and to help us navigate through the jungle. <laughs> and uh, so here they are. Here's Vic on the left. And here's Carrie on the right. Good to be here. Great to be here. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, don't take my word for it. I, I uh, recommend to people, if you have a chance, go on the internet, just put Carrie Nasland realtor reviews and just go into google and boom or go you want you, you want to put fix uh, also first name viral v-i-r-a-l viral vic joshi mortgage and just say reviews and you're going to see all these reviews of people so this is these are the these are the real thing here folks they've been time tested and uh it really makes a big difference i in fact i'm going to read some review here's here's a review that uh i saw for carrie and uh, here's one. I had a great experience buying my first home. Carrie, Susan, and the team are awesome. They made me feel comfortable right from the beginning. I always felt like I was a priority. And they went out of their way to make sure I understood every step of the process. The team support was seamless, and you could tell they love what they do and are really, really good at it. They're very attentive, patient, extremely knowledgeable, smart negotiators, and super nice. I loved working with them, and if I could, I'd give them 10 stars. Thank you, Carrie and Susan. So, if you want to read some more reviews like that, go on the internet. Um, oops. Here's one for Vic. It has been a great pleasure working with Vic for purchasing our first home. Getting a mortgage is a very stressful process. We can't thank him enough for his hard work. Always responsive to emails and even while on vacation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and speaking with us over the phone to answer every question way past normal business hours. Vic got us a great loan in great terms in a very short time frame, while keeping us informed every step of the way. Our situation wasn't easy. We're not U.S. citizens, gift funds, foreign bank accounts, etc. But Vic has made it as easy as possible for us to close. Thank you, Vic. So these are not just one, but there's many of these, so I encourage you to check them out. Not only that, but they were mutual clients for both of us. Yeah. Surprisingly, yeah. Well, you know, what you, what, what you find, if you can get superheroes to come together, you get Superman plus Spider-Man helping you out. Right. Then it's like double trouble. <laughs> That's where the magic happens, for sure. It is. 
Yeah, get some invincibility going on. So um, I thought I'd just ask, ask Carrie just briefly, um, just maybe an overview. I mean, there's no way she can go into all the different things about the areas, but there's um, you definitely want to check with someone like Carrie, depending on your needs, because there's some someone like Carrie's really got a pulse on a lot of different places, and you, you could possibly consider. I know you were telling me about. Uh, there's there's a marina opening up in Richmond, and they're gonna have a ferry coming there pretty mm-hmm. soon. And there's different areas. That's the- true. It's totally true. So I mean, right now what what we're seeing is a, a huge demand in San Francisco, which um, of course you know everything's based on supply and demand. That's that's the epicenter of all things tech, and um, because of that, there's a ton of people who are wanting to purchase property because that's where they work and that's where they live and that's where they play. But unfortunately, there's not enough housing for for all those folks. So what we've seen is that they are actually crossing the bridge into Oakland. Um, West Oakland has been the epicenter for a lot of their landings. Um, But we're seeing that spread out. And as you mentioned before, there is um, a lot of speculation as to Richmond being the next landing spot based on um, the marina opening up and having a ferry landing there. And that's um, happening in 2017. So it's it's right around the corner. And once that happens, I, I foresee a lot more eyes on Richmond and um, I've already seen a ton of folks who never would have even considered Richmond in the past consider it based on the things that are happening there. The new Amazon Fulfillment Center that's gone in um, amongst a whole bunch of other businesses um, that have been announced and have yet to be announced coming into Richmond. There's a lot of cost-effective properties out there that are still giving a positive cash flow, even with their price point. Um, based on that, those are the those are the two areas that that I've been directing folks to. Um, but then, of course, there's always there's always pockets everywhere. I mean, Alameda is great if you want that small hometown feel. Oakland is amazing if you want the food, the dining, the nightlife, the everything that big city has to offer right there in Oakland, sometimes even better than what San Francisco has to offer anymore. Berkeley's got, you know, Tilden Park and hiking and, you know, the best of all worlds. And then, um, you know, you all the surrounding areas just branch out to there and the Bay Area is beautiful for so many reasons and that's just because you can go five minutes in any direction and find something different so that's what makes the Bay Area as a whole very exciting. Wonderful. I thought while we're talking about some of these issues um, especially for buying carry what do you say uh, because now I one of the things I've heard a lot when I first moved down here is about these multiple offers. Right. And that can be kind of confusing to deal with. You find a house you like, and then you find out there's 12 other offers. <laughs> right, which can be intimidating for for everyone. Um, so the, uh, the biggest hint or helpful piece with that would be to make yourself look as good as possible on paper. And a lot of that has to do with aligning yourself with a rock star lender who can um, comply with extremely competitive and attractive terms. And fortunately, I've aligned myself with Vic in, in many of these um, multiple offer situations. And the, the terms that he's able to offer as far as appraisal, loan, contingency periods, and close of escrow times are competitive with cash. Mm. That makes all of my buyers look amazing when they're stacking up to, you know, 12 other offers. Um, so that, that's, I think that's the number one best thing you can do is align yourself with a lender that can help you look best on paper. And even if you don't look good right now, align yourself with a lender who can dive in to your particular um, 
some, you know, financial scenario and help you tweak things so then you can come out looking better than most, um, a lot of times a lot easier than most people think. A lot of people think that it's hard to correct your credit or they try and do it themselves and they end up with a lower credit score than they even started with. Um, and that has everything to do with not having a having a, a guide or a Sherpa to to get through the craziness that is um, you know credit scores and what actually is effective in changing those. So um, number one, make yourself look really good on paper. But number two, also uh, you know every single one of my buyers comes to the table with a love letter. And I know people have heard of that before, and it sounds silly, but it makes an amazing difference. And I have so many success stories with my buyers from just taking the time out to tell the seller who they are, why they love the house, and um, why they should pick them to be the, the new owners. So those are, those are some of the things that I help guide my buyers through that don't cost any money at yeah. all. It's free. It's free to sit down with Vic and have a consultation and find out what they can do to be a rock star buyer. It's free to sit down with me and brainstorm the perfect love letter that will make them stand out in a pile of offers. So yeah. that's that. So might be might be good to ask Vic a few questions because we're right here. Because I think uh, how important would you say loan pre-approval, and what's the difference between that and preliminary approval? So lots of times people will come to me and and ask me um, if I can help them get pre-qualified, and the, the, there's two terms: of pre-qualification and pre-approval. And pre-qualification essentially just means that we've had a verbal conversation. We've talked about some of the criteria that I'm looking for to get a loan approved, but we haven't actually seen any supporting documentation or paperwork from the borrower. We haven't run their credit yet. We haven't done all the nitty gritty things we need to do to actually determine whether or not they can be approved for a loan. So pre-qualification essentially means nothing. Pre-approval is what you want, and the pre-approval means that I've taken all your information, I've run your credit, I've received all of your income and asset documentation, and I've been able to run your data through um, a computer-driven automated underwriting system with one of the large institutional investors like Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, and I have the paperwork to support the data that I use to run that pre-approval. <clears throat> Fannie and Freddie um, use these automated underwriting systems as their Bible for the banker's underwriter. So the underwriter at the bank is the gatekeeper. That's the person who determines whether or not the loan is going to fund. And they look at the results of the automated underwriting system to be their guide and determine whether or not we have all of the documentation in the file we need in order to release the funds on that loan. And the beauty of the automated underwriting system, which I've been using those systems since they almost they came out in 1997 was when I first started using Fannie Mae's desktop underwriter or desktop originator system, um, is that if I have all the paperwork and I have the data and the data is good, then I can instantly figure out that it's an approvable loan or not an approvable loan. And that's what allows me to issue a pre-approval letter, is matching up all that data and that supporting paperwork with the findings from the automated underwriting system. And it happens very quickly. I can pre-approve people within hours if I can get the paperwork. You know, it doesn't have to take a long time for me to do that. So, you know, the, the full approval, a loan approval, is consists of two things. It consists of um, approving the borrower, the buyer, uh, based on their information, their ability to repay the loan, their credit scores, the amount of uh, funds they have available for down payment. And then the other piece to the puzzle is the collateral property, which is in a loan situation, it's a, it's a property appraisal, home inspection, pest inspection, that type of thing. So all we're doing without a property is we're approving the borrower based on their data up to a certain loan amount, transaction amount. And that's essentially what a pre-approval letter is. 
and I know that this is because I know um, you were, I know you don't want to promise you can't promise these fast close times, but I have heard stories about you getting loans through in rather short times. I, I, I know there's no way you can promise a set time, but I've, I've heard some amazing short times. I mean, it's possible to get it done in a week and a half if we have all of our data and our supporting paperwork and everybody is willing to jump and move at lightning speed, if we're willing to pay a little bit extra to get the appraisal done faster, then it's possible. The biggest issue that we're facing right now in the industry is that the government has over-regulated us, which is they needed to regulate us because we were one of the main reasons that the economy collapsed, the mortgage <laughs> industry was, maybe the main reason, I believe. And, uh, you know, we were unregulated prior to uh, the recession. And now we've gone 180 degrees and we're overregulated. And part of these, some of the new regulatory requirements institute painful waiting periods at various stages in the process. And in a purchase transaction when we have to close on a deadline, waiting on a lender to disclose a document that the borrower has to acknowledge before a three-day clock can start ticking before the process can start moving again can be really painful and can cause a lot of stress for everybody. So we just have to make sure that we get our ducks in a row early and that's why pre-approving is key because the sooner you get pre-approved with your lender, your ducks are in a row right there before you even go out and start looking for property. But that's not with just any lender. I, you have to understand that if you go to some of the big box banks, they're going to give you a pre-approval without actually scrutinizing the file, and therefore there's going to be problems, and that's why they can't close as quickly and why, why issues do come up. And the, the, this is primarily the reason why I align myself with Vic is because he essentially pre-underwrites every file prior to us even going shopping, which is huge in the eyes of the seller and the agent who's representing and coaching the seller into what offer to choose because Vic's going to give them a call before they even look at our offer to explain that his buyers are, are completely ready to go and that's why we can commit to some amazing short time periods which um, are competitive with cash buyers. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, what I learned is that uh, from uh, from Vic, I learned that you know some of these loans are like a factory. You know, it's like there's the guy, there's the sales team, and they're out there pitching. We're the big blah 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 bank, and we have this big name and everything, and we're big and great. And then when you sign up, then you're passed on to this back office people, and the loan officer is not really involved anymore. You're passed off to some back office people who may or may not even be in relationship with you. And then uh, what, what I saw different when I came over to your office and I was visiting, it's like you were the one talking to the people at the front end, you could say the salesperson, but then you were also involved in every detail. You knew exactly the process. So it's a lot more involvement, but because of that, it seems like you can get much better results. Well, it's just not an assembly line process. You know, I started my career working in that type of fashion, assembly line system. <clears throat> and the problem with that is that you don't know how loans work. You don't know how they close. You don't know what is needed to make a loan. You're put out there as a loan officer and your entire job is to just take loan applications in the front door. And what happens is they take them in the front door, they throw them in the back office, and they throw them against the wall and see which ones stick. Because the big banks, and in that, in that sales model, it's a numbers game for them. They spend all their money on their marketing machine you know, to get loan applications in the front door, and if they close a certain percentage of them, then fine. And if they don't, they don't care because a bank has no fiduciary responsibility to their clients. They can lend or not lend to them anytime they want. And they can pull the plug anytime they want as well. And when that happens with a bank, you're stuck, you know, without any place to go because they're only lending their money. You know, I have a hundred different lenders, and I'm going to figure out early on what the issues of the loan are. There are two things, two tenets that I work under. Number one, mortgage lending makes zero common sense. It's a series of arbitrary rules and guidelines that risk managers publish that the underwriter follows, and the 
Number two, the bank's underwriter's job is to kill your loan. Banks are not in the business of making loans, they're in the business of killing loans. And so if the, if the underwriter can't figure out a way to kill your loan, then you may get a loan. And so I'm looking at it from that perspective, from the underwriter's perspective. Do I have everything in this loan packet? After taking the sale, after taking that application, now the next step is do I have everything in this loan packet documentation-wise to support the underwriting requirements? And before that loan packet even gets to the lender, we've already mapped out the entire loan. We don't want the underwriter to do any thinking. We've mapped it all out for them, so all they have to do is check boxes. When our loans go in to the bank and we have relationships, strong relationships with, with various banks that we build up over the course of years, in some cases I have a 10-year relationship with some of these lenders, uh, reps that are, that, are, that are my counterpoint on the banking side, when the underwriter sees my loan come in, it goes to the top of the stack because they know that's an easy one that they can just get off of their pipeline and move on to some of these other more difficult loans where people didn't do their homework and didn't map out their loan. And so our loans go through faster, and then at the same time, we have very minimal conditions. We don't get conditioned for a lot of paperwork over and over again. You hear these nightmares from people where, you know, their loan officer at a big bank kept calling them over and over again for different things and new things after they delivered the documents. They wanted more and more and more. We get loans that go in sometimes and go straight through underwriting without a single condition from the borrower. It's just here's your approval. And we're just waiting for an appraisal, and that's it. You know, we get calls from underwriters who call us to thank us about how clean our files are, and who love they just love working with us because we make their lives super easy. Wow. Yeah. That's Thanks. some superhero action right there. But it's just planning. Be prepared. But I think people just don't. People just seem to think a loan is a loan, and it's really a different process. And that difference in the process makes a difference. <laughs> it's huge. It's huge. Carrie, I want to go back to you about some complications also, because I know a lot of people, of course, it's many different buyers. Some buyers already have a home, and they would like to move, but I think they have this issue sometimes, I don't know what I can get for my house. Mm -hmm. If I can get enough for my house, mm -hmm. then I'd move, but it seems like such an ordeal to go through that. i got to go through six months of doing that, and then is that enough time? But you were telling me something you can test out selling your house first right. yeah. in, in a couple of weeks perhaps and then they're not locked in for a long six month contract and then at the same time how do you deal with some of those issues so people are selling their house and then they can buy the next one and hopefully they're not homeless in between. Right, right. So um, I do, I, I actually have a system for testing the market before someone even starts to dump money into their property because that's the biggest fear. I'm about to put my property on the market. I got to spend $30,000 on all these issues, getting everything prettied up. And how do I even know my property is going to sell for the amount that I need to move to the next place? So I have, I, I have a system. Um, together that we can test the market. It's two weeks on. It's a two-week listing period. If we do not sell your house at the amount that you need to move on, then we shake hands and go our separate ways, or we move on to plan B, which is start to do the repairs, start to make the um, do the things that make the property more attractive to the average buyer. Um, and that actually comes with even a lower commission rate, and I could, I could speak 45 minutes on that process right now, but I'm not going to even get into it. But there, there is a way to test the market mm. to make sure that no one's jumping into something that's not going to produce the results that they need. In addition to that, um, there are things like bridge loans, or you can take an equity line in order to fund the purchase of the next house so then you don't end up homeless. And yeah, once once you take the equity line or the bridge loan, you're a little locked in at that point, so there's no testing the market after that, but at least you know where you're going and at least you know that um, you know, you're not couch surfing after the sale period and there's also situations where we can negotiate a seller rent back 
from the buyer who has purchased the house. So let's say that the you know the property closes, but you need two months to get it together to get into that next property, or f even find that next property. That's available and that's negotiable, and there there is that option there. Sometimes that's the best option for folks. Well, that's what I like about our superheroes. They're able to think outside the box. <laughs> And that makes a big difference because these little details, especially I think when you're dealing in the Bay Area, everything's so high priced, you know, an extra quarter percent on that loan when you're talking an $800,000 mortgage can be quite a difference over the course of 30 years. And uh, in fact, I wanted to ask Vic another question uh, about some of these loan options because I know there's FHA, there's government, there's VA, and some people think, of course, 20% is kind of a standard in some ways, but you know, 20% on 800,000 is a bit of change. Some people might want to spend less than that. I've heard of these 80, 10, 10 things. So maybe you can talk a little bit about different loans that are a possibility and what might be appropriate for different people. Yeah, I mean, there's. I could talk about this for hours probably. Um, <laughs> but just to break it down real quick, there's two basic categories of loan types. There's your conventional lending, which is comprised of uh, government-sponsored uh, enterprises or entities like Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Um, you've got your government, what we call government loans, which are FHA and VA, so Federal Housing Administration, Veterans Administration. Those are more the conventional lending options. And then you've got your, um, and, and those options conform to various types of government underwriting. Then you've got your non-conforming, and your non-conventional options. So non-conforming just simply means jumbo. People have heard that terminology. A jumbo loan, it you know, <clears throat> brings up the idea that the loan amount is large. And yes, it is large because it's larger than the loan limits that exist for the conforming uh, conventional loans. And then there's non-conventional financing, which is all this other weird stuff, which I'm not going to get into. But really, we're looking at the conforming and the non-conforming loan types. And when you get into those higher loan types, those jumbo loans, the down payment requirements are greater because the lenders who are lending those jumbo loans are not backed by the government. Those are institutional banks, individual lenders. They're lending their own portfolio of money, and they're sitting on that money. They're collecting the interest for themselves. They're not necessarily able to sell that loan in the secondary market and recover their capital to do something else with it. So because of that, their lending guidelines are more strict and the requirements for down payment are greater. But when we get to the conventional and government type loans, there are options where you can do 1% down. Mm. There are ways to do almost 0% down regularly. There are zero down options for veterans. There are zero down options for properties that are in designated rural areas. But you can go and get, get it all the way down to like 1% right now if you want to. You know, there's there's a standard 3% Fannie Mae program, and FHA standard minimum down payment is 3.5%. And then there are down payment assistance programs that are out there that allow you to get a forgivable second mortgage or a silent second mortgage, something that sits behind that first mortgage that bridges the gap. So if you only really have 1% from down, you can, you can do it. Um, so yeah, 20% is not necessary, but 20% gets you out of the private mortgage insurance. So that's the issue that most people hear about is PMI. So mortgage insurance is a requirement with a lender anytime the rule of thumb is if the loan balance starting out is greater than 80% of the purchase price. In other words, 20% down, 80% loan. If it's greater than that, loan amount goes higher than that, then there's private mortgage insurance and that private mortgage insurance adds to your monthly mortgage payments. And it doesn't help the borrower, it helps the bank. If the borrower misses a payment, then the insurance company pays a third of that payment to the bank. And so we're trying to figure out strategies to get out of mortgage insurance, and one of those strategies is to chop up the loan into two pieces. And if you have two loans where neither loan is greater than 80% of the purchase price, that circumvents the rule of PMI. Um, right now, you still need 10% down because getting a second mortgage to go greater than 90% loan compared to the value to the property price 
is that product doesn't seem to exist yet in the market. Um, it used to exist where you could do two loans, 80% first mortgage, 20% second mortgage, zero down, one of the loan products that helped push us into the recession. And uh, now you need to come up with at least 10% down to avoid PMI, private mortgage insurance, and you would do a first mortgage 80%, second mortgage 10% of the sales price, 10% down, we call that 80-10-10. So there's lots of different options and strategies. We have to look at you know what the borrower can afford to pay, what are the prices that we're looking at, property types sometimes come into play, condo versus single family residence, multi-unit residential, one to four unit residential, you've got greater down payment requirements and you can't circumvent some of this stuff. So, you know, everyone's situation is unique. We'll just match them up with the solution that may work for them. We still have those FHA 203K you can fix up the house? They do have a 203K renovation loan that you can fix up. But they're, they're I found those to be very difficult. They, they are. They want so much, so much uh, red tape. And you well, gotta, you, you got to go through all the counseling. You've got to go through yeah. all the counseling. You've got to get a HUD approved, um, Contractor. Yeah, uh, co not only contractor, but you've got to work with an actual HUD approved consultant. A HUD consultant will come in on your project and help you work through. You've got to get, you know, your plans and permits. There's a lot of steps to do, but it could be a really killer program for, for people Certainly. who are trying to come in and, 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 you know, buy a property that's, that's in such disrepair that you can't get a conventional loan for it. That might be the only way to get it done. Right, right. But the, the big problem is, is that most sellers and their agents know that there's a lot of hoops that need to be jumped through in order to get those loans completed and so if they can avoid them they do at any cost so that would be more of a situation where it was possibly friends selling a property to another friend that was in disrepair or more of an off-market insider deal because the majority of the properties that are on the market in that kind of disrepair at a price point that makes sense to fix them up are being swooped up with cash. Uh -huh. Right. Well, that's the thing. You know, you have all these ideas. You want to check it with your superheroes. <laughs> right. Well, that's the main thing. Uh, I, you know, we could go on and on with these questions. In fact, some of these issues you could talk for hours. The main thing I think I would like to get people across is that um, – you want to talk to these people before you know as you get involved in the process. Before, before you before get before you get involved in the, in the process, you really want to flush your ideas out against someone who's been in the trenches. Before right. you go just jumping in the jungle, and then you get in trouble. Maybe talk to these people first so you know how to even approach the jungle, which areas to avoid in the jungle. <laughs> What kind of supplies you need to get through the jungle? <laughs> These animals can jump out and bite you, <laughs> and they can hurt. But some of those animals might be your friend. Yeah. So. Yeah. One thing I wanted to say, because I know this with being an agent, um, I know a lot of people pick a real estate agent or a loan officer just because they're their friend, and you know, maybe their friend is a part-time agent, and you know, they're trying it out on the weekends, and maybe somebody's you know, got a job as a loan officer and they've been there for three months and you want to help them out and that's a very nice thing but at the same time you, I think people need to understand that this is perhaps the biggest financial transaction you're ever going to have happen. So just as an analogy, let's say you needed brain surgery, God forbid, <laughs> would you just do it with a friend because they read a couple of biology books or <laughs> I'm being a little extreme here, but you know, what I'm saying is you'd want to go out and get the absolute best brain surgeon if you ever had to have something like that happen. So what I, I just encourage people, it's a good intention to help your friends. In fact, you know, maybe your friends could refer them and they can still get a referral fee, you know. Sure. So there's a way to get them involved without you having because you know really you could ultimately hurt your friendship because if you find out later that really by using your friend, you might have cost yourself a couple hundred thousand dollars. It kind of could spoil the relationship. So I really, um, you know, just think about this major transaction you're doing. And um, one thing I really respect about uh, Vic and Carrie is they'll take time talking to you and walking you through the whole process. For free. Answering your For questions. Free. That's true. You know, I, Vic always says. C2 Financial Home, a free mortgage consultation. <laughs> and I like that because I think um, 
there was an old, uh, I grew up in, uh, there was always that radio ad, Cy Sims, it was a clothing store. They said, yeah, this radio ad, Cy Sims, where an educated consumer is our best customer. But that's the real approach I like when talking to you. I don't feel like you're being sold to or doing some fast yeah, take. Right. It's just raw, pure fact and education. You know, this is how the loan process works. This is how it works. And this is how the selling process works. But what I like also is the out of the box, like this whole thing about testing for two weeks. You know, find out what your home's worth. You've had some surprises there, haven't you? People have thought their house wasn't worth as much, and then Absolutely. it turns out. Right. And had they spent a ton of money readying their property for sale, it would have been a bitter pill to swallow. This way, they were able to take their next steps, knowing exactly what the market would bear. And you know, you can go to Zillow all day long, but your property is only worth what someone's willing to pay for it. So that is the true test. And especially in the Bay Area, you might be pleasantly surprised, right? Absolutely. And more you times than not, you're pleasantly surprised. Uh, you know, multiple offers. And then, yeah. Well, I think uh, we've taken some time here. And uh, really, any of these subjects we could probably dive into for hours. But I just wanted to give people a taste today of what I've come to feel about these our two experts. And uh, any, anything special you want to say about a first-time home buyers? I think, it's the same. I think it's even more important to educate yourself on the process. And I think talking to both, both of you makes a big difference. Absolutely. I, I think the, the biggest takeaway is to actually sit down with a professional such as us, Vic and myself, um, prior to taking those first steps because there's going to be things that get skipped or overlooked that are going to become an aha moment later and you know if you had only thought you had only known you know you would have not paid off that cable bill which ended up making your your uh, APR I mean your credit yeah, score yeah. go up uh, right. because it, it opened up you know a year's worth of defaults or anything like that there's just little things that people try and DIY because they read something on the internet mm -hmm. and think, oh, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start here and then I'll call someone when I'm really ready. No, no, no. You'll, you'll never get really ready until you actually sit down with, with someone and put together a solid game plan. Well, yeah, and the issue, again, and I can't emphasize this enough, is that mortgage lending makes zero common sense. And I work with, I have a huge book of business through the University of California. I work with some of the smartest people on the planet, professors, and they try to apply their common sense to this and it doesn't work. And we end up having to scramble to fix things halfway in the process when we've got deadlines and we've got people's deposits on the line and, you know, we don't want to do that, you know. so. Uh, before you start trying to fix your credit or figure out how much you need to save to buy or you know what type of job uh, you need to have or how your income needs to look on the tax return if you're self-employed, before doing any of those kinds of things, sit down with a professional like us and uh, you know take take the free time and get the free information because the whole our whole business model is based on giving away free information and if people transact with us, Great, and if they don't, maybe they'll refer us to somebody else, or maybe they'll come back to us later when they can. But at least we need to get in there early so that people aren't doing things to sabotage themselves. Yeah, you know. So here's the contact information: Viral Vic Joshi. You, the best number to call you is 510-655-2868. Is that right? Yep. And you can email viral at vicjoshi.com, V-I-R-A-L at V-I-C-J-O-S-H-I.com. And Carrie can be reached at 510-409-4966. Uh, Correct. And Carrie Nasland at gmail.com. Ooh, there's a typo there. Oh, Naslund. <laughs> oh, okay. N-A-S-L-U-N as in Nancy. D. Correct. Yeah, so Carrie, I'm, I'm taking advantage of our superheroes here. And uh, the nice thing, I think, too, is that when you get them working together, then you've really got the dynamic duo 
on your side. Well, yeah, and, and it's been working so well that I pretty much refer every home buyer that I have to Carrie um, because I know that she just dominates what she does. <laughs> and uh, I have people who uh, you know have felt like they wouldn't be able to compete in this market, and I've told them that that's nonsense, that they have to talk to Carrie first, and as soon as they get with Carrie, they pretty much get into contract really quickly, and then I'm able to, to do my magic and, and make the deal happen. And magic is exactly a correct way to describe what, what Vic does, and that's what makes this duo an amazing power to be reckoned with, because we just... <laughs> we do some amazing things for our clients. Okay. Well, that's all the time we have for now, but I do encourage you to get involved, call them up, and uh, get your free information. And uh, thank you very much for coming today. Thank you for putting this together, John. Okay. Appreciate it. All right. We'll talk soon.